we know that uh, today, the specialty of today is the 84th uh, birth anniversary of Dr. APJ. He visited our campus last year. I don't know how many of you know that uh, he visited our campus uh, last year and interact with uh, our students. And uh, the main thing we remember when we are talking about APJ is that uh, we ask all the students to dream, all the people, not students, to people dream. And we know that uh, one day that dream will come true. So he is a scientist, he was a scientist, turned to a politician because uh, he became the president of uh, India, 11th president of India, 2002 to 2007. The nation is strengthened, not due to his missile or any kind of weapon. The main strength of any nation is depends upon the people. So same thing I repeat here. The, the strength of this college, College of Engineering Trivandrum, is not due to the building, not due to the placement, they just due to the people like Dr. G. Devindranath, the speaker today, alumni of this institution. That's the only thing you keep in mind. And you forget all other things. And some days people think that, uh, why should I take admission to College of Trivandrum? To get a job. To get a job, it need not come to college in Toronto. That's a scenario today, no? To get a job, simply to get a job, you need not come to college because you can join any other college, you'll get a job. But to become a good engineer, you have to take admission to college in Toronto. Because we produce n number of good engineers. And that is the reason we are getting, you people are getting jobs. If you take any institution, any organization, you can see that at top level, you can see alumni from College of Toronto. Whether you take a, a Google or in Microsoft, any product companies like that, or apply materials, when you, uh, I mean, apply materials, you know, the apply materials, one of the top computer science and electronics company. And if it is a series, you are all from College of Toronto. So, so we had a great tradition and because of the people like the serious alumni like uh, Dr. G. Ravindranath and uh, he is very kind enough to give a lecture on commemorating the birth anniversary of APJ Abdul Kalam. We are very happy to, sir, to be back to our campus. So on behalf of our college and also on behalf of uh, CTD Bay, the Karigan Sampleson Unit, I just say warm welcome you sir, to your alma mater to our campus. We have with us uh, Mr. Ansar Asad. He is giving a special address on entrepreneurial growth through associating with the industrial bodies. We are hearing a lot of uh, activities on entrepreneurship and startups and other things. And for this year on, I mean, KTU, this 2015 admission on was, you got, you will get a separate credit point for activities related to this. So it's a small talk, you may be after this presentation, there will be a small talk on entrepreneurial growth through associated with industry bodies. So I welcome Sansar as such to this uh, program. I also welcome all the people, I mean Mr. Kenny Jacob, no? So I welcome all the People associated with CAE and the Young Engines Toronto Toronto for this function. So now I request the dignitaries to the dais, occupy the dais. I am interested to introduce Dr. G. Ravindranath, former director IASU. So for that I will read out the biodata of him. Dr. G. Ravindranath had graduated in Electronics and Communications Engineering from College of Engineering in Trivandrum, affiliated to the University of Kerala in 1973, securing first rank. He received a gold medal from Institution of Engineers for securing topmost marks 
among all branches of engineering in Kerala in 1973. Soon after graduation, he joined SLV3 project headed by none other than our Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam in Vikram Sarafai Space Center, Tirvandavaram. Devindranath made his debuts in the ASVL ISRO projects of SLV3 and ASLV in the area of development of automatic checkout systems for subsystems and integrated launch vehicles. He had supported the initial launches with the mini computer based checkout systems which were later graduated to in-house developed the real time systems with improved quality and reliability. For this nation awarded him the coveted NRDC Independence Day Invention Award in 1985. In 1996, he joined GSLV project as Deputy Project Director in charge of GSLV vehicle integration and checkout activities and was responsible for system definition, realization and qualification of the avionics subsystems and their integration in GSLV. He made significant contribution to the development and validation of avionic systems for the procured cryogenic stages from Russia. He had good interaction with the Russian teams, particularly in validating ISRO systems in engine and stages. Also, he had successfully interfaced with the systems during the filling mock-up trials of cryogenic stage at Sadish Dhawan Space Center, Sriharikota and ultimately used them flawlessly in the GSLV launches. In 2003, G. Ravindranath was designated Project Director GSLV and had been responsible for the operational launches of GSLV with EduSat and INSAT 4CR spacecrafts which had made a real impetus to the indigenous launch capability for operational spacecrafts. Devindranath was also fully involved in the realization of GSLV D3 mission with indigenous cryogenic stage. He was closely associated with development of onboard subsystems and systems of cryogenic upper stage including their qualification in a series of engine tests and ultimately in the stage test. He worked hand in hand with the cryogenic upper stage project and LPSC. Uh, LPSC SDSC teams to get the flight article ready as well as ground systems for servicing the stage. For his contributions as team leader, he was awarded along with significant performers of his team the ISRO Team Excellence Award in the year 2007. Devindranath was also awarded ISRO Performance Excellence Award 2009 and ASI ISRO Award 2011 for rocket and related technologies. In 2011, G. Ravindranath was designated Director ISRO Inertial Systems Unit at Patur uh, and was leading the team that designs, develops and supplies precision inertial navigation systems for launch vehicle and spacecraft of ISRO and a variety of mechanisms, solar array drives and momentum and reaction control wheels for ISRO spacecrafts. IASU also is in the forefront of developing critical technologies for ISRO's future programs involving systems of high precision and unlimited life in orbit. Under his leadership, IASU has presently diversified separating R&D from production and significant strides are made to realize systems for operational spacecrafts and launch vehicles in a fast track mode. He has been giving thrust to improving the quality of sensors and systems thereby aiming to achieve more precision in spacecraft orbital injection parameters comparable to those of optical systems used in advanced vehicles of other space agencies. Devindranath superannuated from government service in May 2014 after an innings of 40 years in ISRO. Devindranath is active in a number of technical forums. He is a fellow of the Aeronautical Society of India, a life member of Astronautical Society 
of India and Indian National Society for Aerospace Related Mechanisms. He is a corresponding member International Academy of Astronautics and has the associate status with Committee on Space Research. These are all about Dr. Ravindranath. So, I conclude here, I already introduced. Before commencing my talk, let me first offer my humble pranam to this noble institution, this Saraswati Kshetra, which had bestowed upon me unlimited blessings to shape my life and make me what I am today. My sincere gratitude and respects to all my gurus and my colleagues for my destiny and my sincere appreciation to all my juniors who are keeping the torch of knowledge ever lit with astounding glory and beckoning a bright future to this great institution. Let me thank you very much. Today, we are all gathered here to commemorate the 84th birth anniversary of our beloved Dr. Abul Pakir Jainaluddin Abdul Kalam and to dream on his vision for India 2020. Abdul Kalam, born on 15th October 1931, is one of the India's most distinguished scientists, teacher, visionary and a beacon of hope all molded into one. He was responsible for the development of India's first satellite launch vehicle, SLV-3, development of operational strategic missiles and Indianization of critical technologies. He held very senior position in ISRO, DRDO and was the principal scientific advisor to government of India. He was also instrumental in demonstrating India's prowess in the nuclear arena. He was the ultimate choice to become the first citizen of this country from 2002 to 2007 to occupy the hot seat and guide the country in its quest for development. He had the unique honor of receiving country's coveted civilian honors Padma Bhushan in 1981, Padma Vibhushan in 1990 and Bharat Ratna in 1997. Shagar Gupta of Indian Express has portrayed our Bhara, dear Bharat Ratna Kalam in a short article assessing his role in shaping the country's future. He was in really a scientist in the classical terms of sense, nor was he a father of Indian nuclear bomb, nor was he a politician or public figure by upbringing or training given that much of his life was spent in laboratories of ISRO and DRDO. And much as he loved to recite Sanskrit slokas and to play the Rudra Veena, he was simple, God-loving human being. He is immortalized in our collective memory as a man who gave us our nuclear deterrent. He became the most popular public speaker across generations, geographies, and demographics in India and never spoke at a hall less than bursting at flanks with standees. All communities loved and trusted him. He achieved heights of love and respect of his countrymen which came from his humility. He never played to the gallery and used excuses when he encountered failures in his missions. He always put the nation first. He was, in, he was not petty, cynical, selfish, vengeful, unprincipled or egoistic. That is why billion plus Indians revere him as their most loved leader in decades. He was the most loved of our children. He was most loved by our children after Chacha Nehru. His stature grew so phenomenally that he became the most wise and non-partisan personality of his time. I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to pay my reverence and respects to Dr. Kalam, who happened to be my mentor and who shaped my life in my formative years in, at Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Before dwelling upon his vision, which is the prime topic of today, let me present him in the raw form 
by a subordinate who joined his team and worked in project slv3 from 1973 to 1980 contrary to my expectations of meeting a formal and tough superior when i met him first time i found him to be a very simple person who listens to you more than sermonizing i could feel his pulse from his colleagues in the very second week of my joining vssc when he appreciated my trivial contribution to a civil engineering plan of an slv3 block house he was always encouraging you to achieve perfection in your profession he will not appreciate your work unless and until you go into the depth of a problem and surface a few issues which may be either design related fabrication related or related to the basic concept itself to achieve perfection he will support your conviction to the health if he is to the hilt if he is convinced i will give a brief example on this i was working the team to develop the automatic launch vehicle check out system for slv3 we had to procure a digital computer for this after detailed literature survey i had narrowed down to choose pdp 11 mini computer system marketed by digital equipment corporation usa the competitor to this was barc developed and ecl manufacturer